Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the Google Pixel 6. Now you're not gonna need any popcorn or thought juice. I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as I can because basically, if you see my real review for the 6 Pro, everything that I like and don't like are pretty much exactly the same except for a few things which I'm gonna talk about in this video. Now let me start off by saying this. The Pixel 6 is the best mid-range Android phone of the year. Now when I say mid-range, I mean mid-range pricing. So from 400 to 700 bucks, I consider that mid-range, anything over 700 bucks, that's flagship pricing, and anything under 400 bucks, that's pretty much budget phone status. So when it comes to pricing, this is the best Android phone of the year. Now I know somebody's gonna say, what about the Mi 11? What about the Realme phones? What about the Redmi phones? A lot of those phones, especially the regular Mi 11, on paper are better than the 6, but here's the thing. A lot of those phones, especially if you live in the USA, they're not available on all of your carriers, and you're not gonna get 5G. Now with the Pixel 6, this works on any carrier, and you're gonna get 5G. So all of those features on the regular Mi 11, they don't mean nothing if you're somewhere with no reception, and you can't get your 5G that you're paying for. So the Google Pixel 6 is the best mid-range Android phone of the year. Point blank, period, full stop. Now, let's go through the main differences between the 6 and the 6 Pro. These are the 10 things that I find to be different. Now, these are not all of the differences, but these are just the 10 most important differences. Number one, the price. All right, with the 6, you spend the 600 bucks. With the 6 Pro, 900 bucks. Now, do the math yourself, $300 savings, that smells like savings, all right? $300 savings, it smells like savings to me. Next, color choices. With the six, you got seafoam, coral, and black. With the pro, you got sunny, white, and black. And on a side note, shout out to Google, they did it big this year. These colors look beautiful, all right? This is my favorite color, the seafoam, and then right after that, the sort of sunny. In some ways, I'm kind of tired of all of these white phones and black phones and gray phones and blue phones. This is really refreshing to get some nice, bright, vibrant color choices on deck. Okay, I love it. So that's one of the differences, color choices. Number three, RAM. Okay, with the 6, you got 8 gigs of RAM. With the 6 Pro, you got 12 gigs of RAM. So if you're heavy on your phone and RAM is something important to you, then you might want to spend that extra couple of bucks and go with the Pro. But in real world usage, eight gigs of RAM is plenty. Okay, I never had this phone pick up or freeze on me. I never felt like it was not able to handle the load. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> eight gigs of RAM, 12 gigs of RAM. They pretty much identical though, but you're getting more RAM with the Pro. Next, storage. Now this is kind of important because if you're heavy into videos or you download a lot of apps, you're gonna want more storage. There's no expandable memory on either one of these phones. With the six, you got 128 or 256 gigs of storage. With the six Pro, you got 128, 256, and 512. Okay, so if you need more storage, you're gonna have to go with the Pro, 512. Next, battery. Now this is kind of crazy. With the six, you got a 4,614 milliamp battery. With the 6 Pro, you got a 5,003 milliamp battery. So on paper, it seems like the 6 Pro would have better battery. Not the case. You're going to get better battery with your 6. And I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. All right, so it's a difference in battery. The 6 Pro is bigger, but has less battery, believe it or not. Next, all right, number, where we at? Number, number five, camera, okay? Now, with the 6, you got an 8 megapixel camera in the front. 50 megapixel camera in the rear, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, late, but still great, White Shoes is back in the building. I love my white shoes, I love my white shoes, right, white I shoes. love my white shoes. Calm down. All right, shoes, can you scoot, scoot, please? All right, where was we? All right, with the six, you got an eight megapixel camera in the front, 50 megapixel camera in the rear. With the 6 Pro, you got an 11 megapixel camera in the front, 50 megapixel camera in the rear, but you got the telephoto lens. So what does that mean in English? Both of these cameras, and this is the main focus of this video, I wanna show y'all some different camera tests because a lot of people think that that's the biggest difference is you're getting a way better camera with the 6 Pro, not the case, okay? The difference in camera in the real world is 
zoom. You're getting more zoom with your 6 Pro. Now, all of the regular pictures, they pretty much look the same. I'm gonna show you for yourself. On paper, it seems like you're getting a better front-facing camera with the 6 Pro, but your picture's gonna look the same. All of your rear camera pictures, they're gonna look the same. The main difference is zoom. You're getting more scumbag zoom with the 6 Pro. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't, doesn't really use zoom, like if you notice when you're taking your pictures, when you're out in your day-to-day -day life doing your thing, you never zoom in to take pictures, then that shouldn't be an issue for you. Because I, I hardly ever use zoom unless I'm using one of my Samsung or my Xiaomi phones with the scumbag zoom. Then I wanna zoom in from two blocks away and read a sign for parking. You can't do that with the six. I'm gonna show you some examples in a minute. Number seven, display size. All right, now if you hate big phones, you wanna go with the six. With the six, you got a 6.4 inch display. With the six pro, 6.7 inches. So look at the difference in size. Now it's really not that much if you shoes, I'm about to follow you to the side. <laughs> if you look, if you look at the, if you put them side by side, all right, it's only a little bit minor size differential. All right, this is the best way to see it. The six pro is a little bit bigger. So, like I said, if you hate having big phones, then it's a no-brainer. Go with the six. Number eight. Now, this is kind of important also. The display. The panel with the six pro. You got the curved display, which I'm not a big fan of. And the six, you got the flat panel. I love the flat panel. Look, I think if Google would have integrated both of these phones together, this could have, matter of fact, if Google would have made all three of these phones into one big phone, it would have been the phone of the year. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the flat panel. Now, shout out to my man, Danny, I, Danny Wingett. If y'all follow me on Instagram, he just dropped his Pixel with a case on it, and the screen broke. That's one of the things that I don't like about having a curved display. I get a lot of accidental touches. It's harder to find a screen protector, and even when you put a case on it, the sides of the panels are still exposed. So when you drop your phone, you got more chance to break it. With a flat panel, you see all the razivity on the cases. If you drop your phone, it's gonna be more protected. Not to mention, it just feels easier to type on, no accidental touches. I just like the flat panel a little bit better. So that's another major difference. If you like flat panels, go with the six. Some people actually like the curved screens a little bit better. I read all of the comments. Some of y'all like that. I'm one of those people who don't. But that's the difference, all right? Curved display. Number nine, speaking of display, refresh rate. With the six, you got a 90 hertz refresh rate. With the 6 Pro, you got a 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, speaking of refresh rates, you also got a major difference in the display, which is not gonna really uh, make a big deal to the naked eye, but this is 90 hertz full HD. This is 120 hertz quad HD. Now, can you really see that with the naked eye? The answer is yes. If you're somebody who has a Galaxy S21 Ultra, or you're coming from a Xiaomi phone, a Mi 11, that has 120 hertz refresh rate and a quad HD display, you're gonna notice the difference. It's gonna feel a little bit slower and it's not gonna look as sharp. But if you're somebody who doesn't really care about displays like that, and maybe your last phone didn't have quad HD display, you're not gonna care. And when you're looking at these phones, both shoes, I, look, I gotta come through with the black father's voice. Shoes, don't, shoes, don't, shoes, don't, don't touch nothing. Go in the store, don't touch nothing. I'm not buying you nothing, don't touch nothing. How many, how, how many, I don't know. Let me, hit, hit me in the comments and let me know um, all of my other races, all right, Asians, white people, Hispanic people. Did your parents make that voice when y'all go in the store, they smile and look down and just say, don't touch nothing, don't look at nothing, I ain't buying nothing. And if you touch them, I'll kick your ass in the car. Hey, how you doing, Miss Mary? Do, do, do other races do that? I know a lot of black parents do that. I know mine did. <laughs> anyway, 90 hertz versus 120 hertz in real world usage, you're not really gonna tell. But if you're a phonologist, you're gonna tell. All right, so if you want if you want the better display, then you're gonna have to go with the 6 Pro. It's Quad HD and it's uh, 120 hertz. But one thing I wanted to mention also about the 120 hertz on the Pixel 6 Pro, a lot of people, when I was reading the comments, a lot of people were saying that this phone doesn't feel as fast and as smooth as their Mi 11 Ultra or their S21 uh, Gangster. Here's the reason why because this one has a variable refresh rate. So it's not always forced on 120. 
Now with phones like the Galaxy, phones like the Xiaomi, you could force it to 120 and all your menus, everything that you're doing is always gonna be 120 hertz refresh rate. So when you're scrolling through the menus, everything is gonna be flying. With the 6 Pro, if you're not using an app or a feature that the phone determines doesn't need 120 hertz, it's not gonna give you 120 hertz. It's gonna dumb it down a little bit to save the battery. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Now, some people want 120 hertz, you paid for it. You want 120 hertz all day. But if you want better battery, don't mess up the algorithm that uh, <laughs> the adaptive battery is provided. I know it's a lot of big words, hashtag big words alert. On a side note, if you want to, you can go into developer options and you could force 120 hertz through the phone all day. But like I said, that will mess up the uh, algorithm for the adaptive battery. I said all that to say this. Okay, if you feel like your 6 Pro is not as zippy and not as fast as your Mi 11 Ultra, it's because sometimes you're not getting 120 hertz. It's, it's actually doing you a favor and it's dropping it down to 90, dropping it down to 60, so you can save batteries. Sometimes you don't need 120. Okay, does that make sense? But <laughs> with the 6, you're capping out at 90, and you got full HD. Like I said, in the real world, mm, who cares? All right, who cares? But $300 savings, look, if I'm pressed for money, I don't need the quad HD display. I don't need 120 hertz. Give me full HD at 90 hertz. That's beautiful. Okay, the iPhones had that for the last decade. <laughs> they, iPhones just got 120. So if you had an iPhone all your life, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. And lastly, all right, lastly, now this is the, the last difference. The build quality, and this is what I meant by they should have made a Frankenstein phone between all three of these, okay? The build quality. With the 6, you got the matte on the sides instead of the glossy aluminum, which I absolutely love. That was one of the things that I loved about the 4XL, the matte on the sides. Look how it always stays clean. The matte back, again, always stays clean, no fingerprints. They should have put this back these sides on this phone. Because the glossy, even though it looks beautiful, it's just a fingerprint magnet. It don't look shimmery right now, but if you got the black one, which I'll show you right now because I just happen to have one on deck. If you got the black one, you're gonna get those fingerprints and smudges all over the back. Now I happen to have mine kind of clean right now, so it wasn't the best example. <laughs> it wasn't the best example, but you see I had a little right there. Wipe it down, it does look clean. But with the matte feel in the back, you never gotta wipe it down, it always looks clean. On a side note, I was getting ready to sell this phone. I think I'm gonna keep it. I love this phone. All right, the 4XL. The Frankenstein phone of the year would have been take the face unlock and motion sense and build quality, front, I mean, build quality, back and sides. Drop that on here. Drop the flat panel, all right, from the six on here and drop face unlock and a better fingerprint sensor. I don't know if I said face unlock twice, but it's worth mentioning twice. Face unlock and a fingerprint sensor. So basically those are the 10 things that are different between the 6 and the 6 Pro. The price, the colors, the RAM, the storage, the battery, the camera, the display size, the flat panel display, the 90 Hertz full HD, and the build quality. Now, overall, all right, how much do I like this phone on a scale of one to 10? I'm giving this phone a major, major, major go there's just a couple of things about it that i don't like which are everything that i don't like about the 6 pro you could transfer that over except for a few things now one of the things i didn't like was the curved display cancel that out but the, my main gripe about this phone regardless of it not having a face unlock which i do want to mention one thing about a lot of people when i was reading the comments was like well if they put face unlock it would make the phone less secure that's a valid point but my point is Face unlock is not all about security, it's about convenience, okay? When I'm in my bed, I don't need Fort Knox level security on my phone. Now, if I'm at a business meeting and I wanna see all my clients to see that, yeah, you know, if you deal with me, if I leave my phone on the table and one of my clients pick it up, they can't just pick it up and open it up. You know what I'm saying? They can't have my picture and open it up. No, it's gonna, it's gonna be fully secure. My point is options. Give me the option so when I'm in a situation that I don't need security, Give me the face unlock. All right, when I'm in my bed, I wanna do this. All right, when I'm in my bed, I wanna pick up my phone and just look at it, just like the four. Okay, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna have to use my fingerprint sensor in the bed. I want face unlock. The point is the option. I wanna have the option to turn it on or turn it off. So if you don't like face unlock and you think it's unsecure, turn it off. 
And you got people like me who want instant access to their phone when you're in the bed, you know, when you chilling at dinner and you want to keep quickly opening and closing your phone. Uh, give me the option. The same way you have the option to turn off your always on display. Some people don't like always on display. Some people don't want to have their phone on a charger and anybody could just look at it and see if you got a missed notification. Some people don't like that. But they give you the option for the people who do like it, like me, and the people who don't like it, like some of y'all out there, on and off. It's real simple. One button in the, in the option menu to turn it on and off. All right, so this phone for the Google Pixel 7, it needs face unlock, and it needs a better fingerprint sensor. Now, that's my biggest gripe with this phone is the fingerprint sensor. <laughs> Watch my 6 Pro video. All of my other dislikes, those are petty in comparison to how much I hate this fingerprint sensor. Now, I was being very nice when I did the review for the 6 Pro. I said the fingerprint sensor just needs a little bit of work. I'm gonna have to downgrade that to the fingerprint sensor is trash. I, the fingerprint sensor on this phone is, is pretty much trash. Now, it does work when it wants to work. It works when it wants to work, and then sometimes it doesn't. You know how I can tell you that the fingerprint sensor is so trash? It forced me to use an option that I never use on any of my phones. I'm gonna show you right now. An option that I really hate, <laughs> not that I hate, but smart lock. Oh, is it on this phone or the other phone? I don't know which one of these phones that I'm using smart lock on. Maybe it's the other one. But I'm using smart lock. I'm probably, yeah, it's probably my other one. It forced me to use smart lock. Okay, now smart lock is a good feature. It's, very, it's a, also a convenient feature. But if you're hanging around a lot of scumbags, a lot of thoughts, you don't want to have smart lock on. Because if you doze off and you got smart lock set to your watch or your body proximity or a trusted place, you might just doze off and like my father used to say, everybody that's around you is not your friend. Some people that's hanging out with you, they not your friend. Somebody will pick up your phone, go to Cash App, send themselves some money. They'll go on Amazon, buy something, send it for themselves. People do grimy things, okay? So Smart Lock is not a feature that I like to use and like to forget that I have on my phone because I do hang out with a lot of scoundrels. But the fingerprint sensor on these phones are just so trash that it forced me to start using Smart Lock. I don't like that. I, I don't like that. Now, the fingerprint sensor, like I said, you could get it to work. I'm trying not to rage. You could get it to work 100% of the time if you think about it. And that kind of negates the whole the whole fun factor of having an on-screen fingerprint sensor. Why should you have to think about it? Nobody want to think about the fingerprint sensor. When you want to open your phone, you just want to pick it up and open it. You don't want to think about it. So when I pick up my four, all I do is look at it I don't have to think about looking at the face and blinking twice. And if you have to think about something, then it's kind of, it, it, it makes it annoying because there's going to be one time when you're not thinking about it. And the, the easiest way for me to describe my anger with this fingerprint sensor is the camera testing because I'm getting ready to show y'all some camera photos because that's really the main thing that, about this uh, review that I wanted to touch on, the camera photos. So I'm outside. Let's talk about the camera photos. This is what I was doing. Every picture that you're going to see in this camera test reel, I took one picture with the 6 and the exact same picture with the 6 Pro. I did not move. I didn't wait 20 minutes in between shots. Every shot that you see is me walking around like this, bong, and then bong. One phone in each hand, bong, 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 bong. And then when I go to a different location, okay, and I find, you know, I'm trying to get the nicest shot as possible. When I go to open both phones, I, I had smart lock on this one, so I just swiped it open. And this one, I left the fingerprint sensor on. And you know how many times that I'm outside and I had to really, like I'm trying to get a good shot. I wanna get my little neighborhood shots that I do, but I don't like to have people walking by in cars, you know, in the background and all that, so you get the blur. And I go like this and the phone doesn't open and I have to yell out, fuck! You know how many times I yelled out fuck outside, yo? I, I hate to keep cursing like that, but look, man, y'all need to y'all need to capture my mood. If I say I've yelled out frick, that's not my mood. I didn't yell out frick. <laughs> I, I was more angry than frick, all right? The bottom line is my biggest gripe with this phone is the fingerprint sensor. Now, the display is a little bit narrow, and the reason I thought it was a little bit narrower because when I first put my Google widget, the first thing I did was try to stretch it out some. I tried to stretch out my Google widget. You notice the difference in the narrowness? It's a little bit more narrow, but that's not a deal breaker for me. It's a deal breaker for me with Sony phones. I hate those narrow ass Sony phones. This phone is a little on the narrow side. I like my phones to be a little bit wider. <laughs> you know what I'm that's what she said, but you get what I'm saying. All right, the phone is a little bit narrow. The fingerprint sensor is trash. And that's a, that, those are really my two gripes. 
apply all of my other little petty gripes with the non-customization of the AOD, always on display, not being able to move the Google bar, the you know the pop-up windows and all that. All of those gripes are still the same and they're all petty. All of my likes, all of the likes that I had for the 6 Pro, same thing, okay? All of the Google software, the text-to-speech, which is the absolute best feature on any one of these phones. The text-to-speech is the best feature out right now. On I don't care what phone you got, if it don't have Android 12 with the text-to-speech feature, it's trash. No, it's not trash. I'm just kidding. It's not trash. But that feature, man, if y'all notice, y'all see I'm in the comment section even more now. Now I feel like I'm talking to y'all in the comment section because when somebody asks me a question, I'm talking to y'all. I'm, I'm saying the answer to y'all. So a lot of these messages, when I when y'all see my response, you're getting, you're getting my actual voice response. <laughs> now, does that mean anything? Does that make you feel better? I don't know. I don't know. But just just, have, just take, take solace in the fact of knowing that when you read that comment, I said it. I didn't just say, ah, oh, type this. So if you if you come through hating and I told you to go eat a dick, it wasn't like, oh, fuck you, go eat a dick. I actually said it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, anyway, let's talk about the camera because I said I'm going to make this video quick. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make it as quick as I can. But y'all yeah, know I start rambling. Let's talk about the camera. So one of the biggest differences that a lot of people were saying was, oh, I might as well get the 6 Pro because I want a better camera. You're not getting a better camera. You're getting a few extra features in the camera. And really not too many because like I said, the front facing camera pictures, they look the same to me. You could be the judge for yourself when you see the pictures. But the biggest difference that I noticed was the zoom, the zoom. Okay, now let me just show you a quick example right now. Here's the easiest way to see the differences between the zoom feature on the 6 Pro and the 6. Now I'm standing from all the way across the street. Okay, like almost a block away. I zoomed in as close as I can on each of these signs. So here's the six. Here's how the regular picture looked. Now if we zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, you cannot read that sign. Okay, it's just blurry. Here's the six pro. If we zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, you can clearly read the sign. That's the easiest way to tell the difference in the camera, the zoom. You're getting more high quality and longer range zoom as opposed to with the six. Same picture, I'm sending at the same spot, and here's how the zoom looks. So here's what I'm gonna do. Let me show you some test pictures and videos. I'm gonna do a little reel first with the six, and then the same exact reel, same photos with the six pro. You be the judge for yourself. See if there's any major differences when you see the pictures of the houses, the pictures of the trees, the basketball courts, regular everyday shots, see if you could tell just by looking at it that one looks that much better than the other. I think that you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. But like I said, I don't like to talk about pictures. I like for you to use your own eyeballs, all right? So you watch the pictures and tell me what you think. Take a look at these test pictures and videos. Thank you. 
Now, I'm not going to turn this into a full review, but let's do the RDA test, regular daily activities. Here's how it's going to look like when you're using your Pixel 6 on a regular day. Now, you wake up in the morning. You don't have to touch anything. You got an always on display. So you can see the time, the date, the weather, your battery percentage, and your notifications. Now, when you pick up the phone, hit the fingerprint sensor. Hopefully, it works. <laughs> All right, now, let's try that again. I'm going to try to get it on the first try. Pick up the phone. There it is. 90 hertz, full HD, 
buttery smooth. Let's check the web browsing speeds. Go to apple.com. Just as fast as the 6 Pro. Nice and smooth. You got split screen multitasking. Take it over to YouTube on the bottom. Now you got YouTube and Apple on the top. Real life multitasking. All right, now exit out of that. You do have picture and picture. So now I can take it over to Facebook. Let's see what's going down on Facebook. Okay, everybody smiling, everybody looking good. That's what I like to see. Fubu? <laughs> Is that Fubu? Fubu coming back? <laughs> Somebody said, why? <laughs> now look, at the same time, I can exit out of that YouTube video and keep it moving. Fubu? Nah, they need to keep that, yo. All right, shout out to my cousin, Cool Flex, doing his thing. This is how your Facebook is gonna look. Like I said, the difference between 90 hertz and 120 hertz, you're really not gonna notice. All right, unless you're a phoneologist, you're not gonna notice and you're not gonna care. Exit out of that. Next, let's take it over to Instagram. Let's see what's going down on the gram. Okay. Shout out to my man, Tight Shirt Terry. Doing some tight shirt camera stuff. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Keep America stoned. Okay, let's check for the pinch the zoom, boys. All right, Calvin. Pinch the zoom, you in there. Let's see, still the funniest pick ever. Okay, I, I'll take a look at that. Young M.A. with uh, Halle Berry. <laughs> uh, no comment, no comment. Okay, all right, let's, let's go ahead and like that photo. Let's keep it moving, it's a family show. All right, it's a family show. Okay, it's a family show. <laughs> Let me get off the gragger. This, this is too spicy, all right? Too spicy for the pepper. All right, that's, so that's how your Instagram is gonna look. Let's take it over to TikTok. See what's going on on TikTok. All right, now, this is what I like to see, all right? This is the kind of love that I like to see. Animal love. All right, raccoon. Raccoon trying, trying to push up on that cat, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, look, look how cute that is. Oh, that's so cute. Let, 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 let me go ahead and save that. Let me, let, me, let me save that for later. All right, so there's your raccoon, raccoon cat activities. Okay, it's a lot, it's gonna be a lot of thought activity, too, on TikTok. TikTok. TikTok do get spicy occasionally. But that's how your TikTok is gonna look. All right, get your scroll on. Let's go to my profile. Let's see. Um, oh, this is my my old profile. I'm not following anybody. Nobody ain't following me. Hey, it is what it is. Take it over to Twitter. Okay. Let's see if anybody's talking about me. Okay, somebody got the speaking cases. I like that. I like that. Let's see anything else. Uh, in my Flossy Carter voice, these are major, major go. You gotta you gotta do the hand like this. Major, major, major go. Okay, let's see. In your opinion, do you believe the 6 and the 6 Pro were a letdown? Okay, now 14% say, yeah, I was disappointed. This is good. 59% says it was a major W. 27% still undecided. Now, my vote would be, is it a letdown? Mm, I'm not going to say it's a letdown. It's, I'm, going, I'm going with major W because the, the, the Google text, of, the, let me say that right. The Google text-to-speech features, the Google Translate, the build quality, the camera, it's definitely not a letdown, okay? Now, I, I am a little bit disappointed with the fingerprint sensor and the no-face unlock. Those are my two gripes. Everything else I can work with. All right, I, I, I'll reply to that later. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, now, the big paragraphs, like, I, I, I can't read those. I like one word, one, one, two sentences, Texas. I, I like two sentences, tweets here. All right, let's see. Oxygen 12 uh, update. OnePlus did it tomorrow. Using, okay. OnePlus, okay. Somebody said in my floor, so you a voice, TGH. I'm like, okay, my, my voice is out here popular. Okay, I like that. Okay, let's see. Um, ended up ordering the Beats Fit Pro. Bro, the Beats Fit Pro. Let's see. After watching your video, my buddy was asking a question about them. Let's see. Floss will look, floss present, you know, because they, what's the question? He didn't, he, didn't ask, he didn't ask me the question. Anyway, Beats Fit Pro, serious. All right, so this is how your Twitter is going to look. Real nice. Next, uh, let's let's check the speakers real quick. Let me pull up a video. Like like I said, now this is not gonna be a full review. I know, I know. I said I'm not gonna do a full review, but I'm not even gonna hit y'all with the official sound test. I'm gonna just hit y'all with the with the Sony test. Why not? Hit y'all with the Sony test. Let's get some volume. Okay, flat panel. Let's get high auto quality. Higher. Okay. Look at this. Beautiful. Okay. Just a little punch hole camera. Speakers sound great. Let me let's get to some music. I love the heptics on this too. The vibration. 
beautiful. Look at that. Listen to the speaker. That's the top. Here's the bottom. Bang. I dual stereo speakers. Okay. Pitch on pitch you. Apple. 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 And that's pretty much it. All right. That, that's the regular daily activities. I want to do some work stuff. Let's um open up an email. Okay, you, you know my favorite feature already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, that ain't enough money. I can't do it. Send. <laughs> Bro, the text to, the text to speech feature, man. Uh, it, look, man, at the end of the day, even if it, it, all of my dislikes in the world would not, would not equal enough to enough how much I like that feature. Okay, okay, you can have the worst fingerprint sensor, no face unlock, no customization, garbage battery, garbage display. That text to speech feature is enough that this phone would be in my pocket. Anyway, regular daily activities, this phone passes it like a boss. Let's keep it moving. Now let's talk about battery life. Even though on paper it seems like the 6 has a smaller battery than the 6 Pro, so you would think that you're getting better battery life with the 6 Pro, not the case. You're getting better battery life with the 6. Why is that? You got a 90 hertz full HD panel. So you use way more battery with 120 hertz and a quad HD display. Now, if you got the same settings, like I got max brightness, max always on display, max everything. Yesterday when I was doing my testing and I got back in the house, my 6 Pro was on 84% and my 6 was at 90%. Same exact usage, same scenarios, same situations you're gonna get better battery on the six. So overall, on a scale of one to 10, I'm giving the Google Pixel 6 a major, major, major go. This is easily the best mid-range Android phone out right now. Not only because all of the features, not only because you're getting the three years of guaranteed updates, the five years of security patches, which you're not gonna see on Xiaomi, you're not gonna see on Realme, you're not gonna see on Redmi, this phone works on all of your carriers and you're gonna get 5G. So if you got Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, Metro PCS, Boost, Bob's Fish and Chips and Wireless, whatever you got, you can use this phone and get your 5G that you're paying for. If you want a little bit more performance, all right, you want the Quad HD display, you want 120 Hertz, you want more RAM, more storage, and you want the telephoto zoom, then go with the 6 Pro but the six is the best mid-range Android phone of the year. Anyway, Google Pixel 6, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to mention, accessories. Now y'all seen all of the standard six uh, Pixel cases? I like these, but these kind of take away a little bit of the shine from the phone. Now, if you got one of these funky colors, you want to show it off, my favorite case so far is the Spigen Ultra Hybrid. This case right here, when you slap it on your phone, you get a little wipe down. You're gonna still retain all of that beauty, all of that shine. Everybody's gonna see the beautiful color. You got a lot of resivity on this. All of the buttons work, wireless charge works. Again, the same thing you gotta watch out for, curved displays. You don't have maximum resivity. So if you got the regular six, go with the ultra hybrid, all right, especially if you got the seafoam color and you want everybody to see it. Slap it on and look at that. It has that sticky feel to it. Gives you a little bit of extra grip. This one has maximum resivity. So it's Slam Boy certified, wireless charge, everything works. Anyway, Google Pixel 6 this is a triple major go. Best mid-range Android phone of the year. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, Stream Gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Glossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot. 
Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes. A pitch in the road. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize. I want everybody to subscribe to Flossie Carter for the real tech reviews. Now, Flossie Carter, we know you Flossie. Now, guess what? I'm flashy. Money me all day, the one and only. Flossie Carter, you part of the money team.